Hi everybody, Magno Borgo here, and today I will present the use of code tracker for visual effects. Well, I have been developing Rotofury for a while and been testing a lot of machine learning algos to try to implement inside uh, Rotofury, and uh, code tracker is uh, probably the best one for now uh, regarding tracking and especially tracking with occluded elements where elements uh, you know there's objects in front of elements and they disappear and come back to frame or something like that it's dealing really really well uh, with real life test cases so it's being developed by Meta the company behind Facebook and the University of Oxford they just recently released Code Tracker 2 it's like uh, from the end of December 2023 and I, I'm using Code Tracker 2 for this demo inside Silhouette. You know, using Rotofury, I can track trackers or shapes. It doesn't matter. It will apply the tracking to each shape point. And the way that you should use a Code Tracker, it performs better if you give it a longer frame range. It's kind of the opposite of what we do in visual effects. So I have a few trackers here. I have a few shapes here. You can see it's not tracked at all. And I will run Code Tracker now for these, you know, 70 frames of this project. I'm not running a NVIDIA card. I'm, I'm running this on a Mac Studio, so it's not fully GPU. Uh, you know, I don't get a full performance like uh, from an NVIDIA GPU, but still, it's a pretty good, you know, a pretty good uh, performance. To track 70 frames and all these points 13 seconds yeah, the way it works it really doesn't matter I can track uh, all the pixels in the image it will still take for example 13 seconds you know it's uh, pretty pretty fast uh, so let's take a look on the result here you know sometimes we get a little some deformations or uh, unwanted deformations one thing that's really, really impressive is the occlusion handling. For example, this, this tracker here, the hand pass on top of it, and you can see that even while the hand is passing, it's sticking to the rest of the motion of the background plate. And even, uh, of course, when the, the hand or the arm is over it for a while, it might be, you know, not super accurate but you see that if you have other trackers that you know it's considering that region and it kind of have the same motion over there so it's pretty pretty nice you know uh, the this region here you can see that it's kind of moving and deforming and it's being tracked really really well you know the ear here is getting a little bit of deformation but you know it's uh maybe sometimes we need to adapt the the tracking here and come back and make some adjustments you know maybe i can do this and then i can send this to track again and it will be fixed you know since i'm inside silhouette i can make adjustments to the track and just you know tell it to retrack what i want which is something that probably these guys that are working with machine learning they are Kind of more into looking into a result that comes out already from the whole video you know but uh since we are running this as a nuke or silhouette or whatever we can always try to fix and prove some loose trackers and uh, run the algo again let's run this project here there's a lot of occlusions as well motion blur stuff passing by on top of it yeah, it's a, it would be a, a really problematic shot to track uh, with regular planar tracking or point tracker. So I have the shape draw here around the car. It's not animated, just one keyframe here. So uh, let's try to run this. Probably will take about, I don't know, 15 seconds or something, you know. Uh, I can run for smaller frame ranges, but uh, it all depends uh, on the occlusions, you know. If you don't have too many occlusions, you can probably run this on smaller, smaller 
frame intervals. Well, let me hit play here. It's really, really nice. You know, it's not perfect, but uh, it's good enough to give us a really nice speed boost for for this kind of tracking. You know, let me drop a tracker here, for example, or maybe let's track a shape here just so we, we have another test here. Let me run this again. So let's see. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> it even goes outside the frame, you know, after a while, the, you know, the exit speed here is not bad, right? It's getting the same kind of motion. And let's face it, after it's outside frame, we don't need this anymore. So it doesn't matter. It's pretty impressive. And if you think about it, it was trained on uh, synthetic data, on CG uh, data. It's not trained on real world uh, examples because it was faster to create synthetic data with the tracking points matching the features that they wanted to track, the occlusions at all. And it's, a, it's doing a pretty good job on the real world. Uh, examples. There's one uh, issue with CoTracker for us now is that it has been released on a non-commercial license. So we really can't use this legally to create commercial work. Uh, until they change that, uh, it's probably we won't see this implemented on commercial software. Well, the second issue is that we really need to uh, deal with GPUs and uh, you know GPU implementations of these, and this can always be problematic across operational systems and such. You can run this on CPU, but it's super slow. It's not probably not worth it because it takes uh, exponentially longer than you running on a GPU, and there's no uh, subpixel accuracy. So, for example, if we see this example here uh, stabilized. Uh, let me stabilize the layer here. You can see that there is some jumping around. You know, it's not super accurate. Even though it's, uh, you know, it's temporarily consistent, there are some issues because of the precision of the sub-pixel tracking that's not implemented. There is no sub-pixel tracking. It's like it's on the middle of pixel. For Roto, for example, you need to take this data and do some preparation to be able to use it. But the results are super impressive. And uh, with our capabilities here inside VFX software, stop the tracking and send the tracking again to retrack and guide this uh, machine learning tracking with some user guidance, I think it's one of the best machine learning algos with you know real use for us vfx artists so yeah thanks for watching and uh this is a co-tracker inside world of fury